This update on the scout drilling at Senken comes to you from the, the core shack uh, just outside the town of Makas, where our field office is in southeastern Ecuador. And what I wanted to do is just summarize what our target concept was first, and then show to you what we actually hit in the, in the core and why we think we're dealing with an iron oxide copper gold system. Just starting off with the target concept, Senken is a bunch of magnetic targets uh, derived from our geophysics that we flew in 2017. There's a massive magnetic high in the south that's about five kilometers in diameter. And then north of that, there's Senken 2, 3, 4, which are discrete magnetic features. And over each one of those, we had a concentration of copper that we picked up in the, in the soil sampling. So we left the big Senken target alone, the five kilometer diameter one, because it was just too much to, to get our heads around at that stage. So we focused on the smaller uh, magnetic features to simplify our scout drilling. We started off at Senken N2 and we drilled three holes there and then we moved about one and 1.7 kilometers to the north onto Senken 3 and we've drilled two more holes in in that area. And what we were expecting is that the magnetic features were deep parts of porphyries which tend to be magnetic. They have a lot of magnetite in them but above that they have quartz sericite pyrite alteration and that's pretty conspicuous. This is an example of outcrop from our Awacha target, which is a porphyry target. And what's key about this is that there is a lot of pyrite in it, the iron sulfide mineral, and the quartz sericite alteration. The sericite is this white clay that, that scratches white, and it's, it's soft, it's easy to scratch. So, what we expected to get in the Senken N2 and N3 targets is to drill through a couple of sediments and then get into a rock that looks similar to this, which would be the top part of a porphyry. We didn't get that at all. In fact, what we got was material like this. The red mineral is hematite. This is a volcanic rock. It floods into it and then it replaces very specific minerals um, indicated in these, in these red spots here. So this rock contains more or less the same amount of iron in it than this rock. But this is just in a sulfide mineral, whereas this is, the iron is in an oxide mineral. And in fact, this rock contains another iron mineral called magnetite. And I'll just put a little magnetic pencil against this just to, to show you. Um, the, the little pencil gets drawn against the rock. It's drawn in by the, the magnetic mineral magnetite. This flooding of these two iron minerals into the rock, in this case a, a, a volcanic, is one of the characteristic features of iron oxide copper gold deposits. And in fact, this piece of rock could be put against a sample from the Ernest Henry deposit in South Australia and you wouldn't be able to distinguish the, the, the difference. So why do we care if this is an iron oxide copper gold system? Well, the first thing is that these systems can be absolutely huge. The best example of an iron oxide copper gold is Olympic Dam in South Australia, an enormous deposit, 1.4 billion tons at a grade of 1% copper and 0.34 grams per ton gold. The second thing is that, as the name implies, these systems have gold with the copper in the majority of cases. And that's one of the differences with a porphyry. A porphyry typically is a copper deposit that, and some of them have gold, maybe 20% have gold with them. And iron oxide, copper, gold, the norm is to have gold with the copper. And then the third thing is that these systems tend to be clustered, whether they're in Brazil or the Chilean Andes or in Australia, they're in districts. So if we've got one here at Senken, N1 and N2, we've got to be wide awake to the fact that there could be others in a relatively close proximity.